Welcome back to the channel YouTubers and thanks to all of you who have already um, subscribed and liked my previous videos. Um, so today's going to be the first in the series of maintenance videos and this one's going to be about bleeding the brakes. Okay then, just going to quickly run through the items you're going to need to carry out today's task. Obviously we're changing the, the brake fluid in the motorcycle so first of all we're going to need some fresh stuff to replace it with. Now it's important that you check what your motorcycle actually takes in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. So for mine, it's going to be dot four, as it says on the tin. It will usually tell you on the, the cap of your master cylinder, whether it's a dot three, dot four, dot five, etc. Some paper toweling or kitchen roll just to help clean up any spillages. Some old containers just to help uh, hold the, the old brake fluid and remember to dispose of it responsibly. A kneeling mat for your knees, some disposable gloves, a length of rubber hose, a spanner relevant to the size of your bleed nipple, so for me it's a 10mm, a Phillips screwdriver, an old rag and an old sheet. So each manufacturer will have a recommended interval when your brake fluid should be changed. I've had this motorcycle from new, so I know it's history. If, however, you've bought a second-hand motorcycle yourself and you have no service history, other ways of telling whether the bike has been looked after is if you look within the master cylinder and you see that the fluid is dark, then that's usually a telltale sign that it needs replacing. So before we move on to actually doing the task, okay, it's important that I point out to you that Brake fluid has a very, very corrosive effect on paintwork. So if you get any brake fluid on any of your painted surfaces, it's important that you wash that area with plenty of warm, soapy water and dry it off. So then, once your bodywork's covered off with an old sheet to protect any um, of the bodywork from any spillages, with your Phillips screwdriver, proceed to remove the retaining bracket that secures your master cylinder lid. Just put them to one side. Remove the lid. And the rubber grommet inside. And then what I like to do is just put it back on there. And balance it. That just helps prevent any dirt or anything getting inside. Should you drop anything in there. So here we are at the business end, the brake caliper. So this is where we're going to use our 10mm spanner to open the bleed nut, which when we do, we always use the ring end, never the open end. Here we are. So we crack open the nut. If you've got a badly maintained motorcycle, um, there's a good chance that these bleed nipples might be seized. If there's any indication that it might be seized, that it looks rusty, um, I advise you to give it a good coat in WD-40 or some other sort of um, similar releasing agent. Give it a good spray, leave it a good half an hour before you're cracking that open up so that there's less risk of it snapping off. So, with a length of rubber hose, you can place that over the bleed nipple. Then I build up myself a bit of a platform with a bucket it just helps balance the tube in my container to catch all the old brake fluid. Now, this is where we take the cap off the master cylinder. Just take that to one side. Give the master a good top up. Now the next bit is really important guys, okay? So, once that bleed nipple is cracked open, we squeeze our brake lever, and we don't release that brake lever until the bleed nipple is shut again. If you were to do that, you would draw air back into your hydraulic system. So never ever ever release the brake lever until the bleed nipple is shut. So once the bleed nipple is open, we squeeze the brake lever. Then close it. 
once the plate the nipple is closed you can then release the brake if you've got somebody who can give you a hand with this it is a lot easier so give the lever a few pumps then hold the pressure then release and open the, the open the nipple close it a few more pumps So while you're doing this, after every few, two or three times of opening the bleed nipple, go and check the master cylinder and make sure it's topped up. Don't let that get too low, because if it does, it will end up drawing in air back into the system at that end, okay? So when it comes to bleeding brakes, it's important that you bleed the furthest brake away from your master cylinder first. So, for example, if your rear brake was operated off the same brake reservoir as your front brakes, then you would bleed the rear brake first. In my instance, my rear brake has its own reservoir, so that can be done separately. So in this instance also, the front brake on the opposite side of the master cylinder would be the furthest one so it's the one that's been done first and I've already done that for ease of filming and that's it all done now it's good practice just before you take the bike out on the road what I like to do is leave a cable tie around my front brake lever and my handlebar just so that my braking system is under a bit of pressure and then I leave it for a good half an hour and I come back and I check make sure that the bleed nipples are nice and dry and that they're not leaking that way when i take my bike out on the road i'm confident in what in the work that i've done if you found this video useful then please like and subscribe to the channel and if there's anything you want me to put out there in the future please leave it in the comments below thank you and goodbye